A comment from a few weeks ago by Neville comes to light as he and Dan get in a fight over the grifter comment uh, from a few episodes ago. Let's talk about the Connors. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my TV review for The Connors, episode 21 of season 5. That means we've just got one more to go, uh, the uh, season finale for The Connors. This one, though, Dating, Drinking, and Grifter Logic is the title, and uh, we are going to launch into uh, my thoughts on this episode and, and the basic premise here uh, in just a moment. But first, I want to welcome you into Dan Reviews It. Thank you for finding this video. Uh, I do the Connors reviews every single week that there is a new episode, so next week will be the last one uh, until... Fingers crossed, season six. Uh, no official word from ABC yet on that, but I, I know it's coming. It's got to be. Um, so we'll, we'll uh, keep you posted on that. But hopefully by next week's finale, uh, we'll know 100% for sure uh, whether it is renewed or not. But in any event, uh, you can check out my Connors reviews in uh, playlists on my homepage or uh, even the old Roseanne seasons from the 90s. I've done those season by season, uh, so you can check those out too. All right, let's get into dating, drinking, and grifter logic. Um, let's let's talk about the last two first, drinking and the grifter logic, because uh, that relates to uh, what I was mentioning in the intro, that a comment made by Neville a few weeks ago um, when Jackie and Dan were on a road trip she had uh, wanted to borrow $1,000 from him, and he said he did not want her grifter family getting a hold of it. So uh, it all comes out at a poker game in the opening scene, and, uh, you know, Neville and Jackie sort of have a little bit of a, a fight about it, too, because he thinks Jackie, you know, kind of told Dan uh, what was said, but uh, Dan made it clear that, no, I overheard the phone conversation. Um, I can't remember, you can tell me in the comments, I can't remember if if she was actually on speakerphone or not, um, I, I think maybe she was. Um, but in any event, he overheard. And uh, so, you know, him and Jackie kind of had a pact, though, to not bring it up, you know, that he was silently going to resent Neville, but, um, you know, not, not actually ever say anything about it. But, you know, once uh, the poker chips start flying and everything, I, I guess all bets are off. So uh, Neville kind of storms out angry at Jackie, uh, you know, probably a bit embarrassed uh, about the comment, and she cannot find him. He did not come home. Um, so eventually, you know, Dan makes makes a few calls, goes on a bit of a search, and finds him at the Lobo, um, which we, we had not really seen much of the Lobo until this season, um, you know, but that's a classic, uh, you know, Roseanne haunt uh, back in the day, her and Dan and uh, Jackie, and you know, everybody would go there all the time. So it's kind of nice that um, that's back into the mix. Um, and, uh, you know, a little bit of a nice touch. Uh, the, the guy playing the bartender was wearing a Lobo Lounge shirt. So, you know, they've, they've the, the costume department uh, of the Connors here has, you know, gone a little bit above on that, I thought. But, um, they end up, you know, kind of having it out and uh, Dan saying, look, you know, this is what a supportive family is. You and Louise, uh, you know, came from this horrible family. They made, you know, some mentions to that earlier in the episode about how, uh, you know, if, if you owed mom, go fish pennies. Uh, you didn't get any money for your tooth uh, from the tooth fairy. So, uh, you know, he, he's explaining, look, this is what real family is. This is what we do for each other, um, you know, X, Y, and Z. So, Neville storms out of there, uh, but he is very drunk, and Dan obviously does not want him to get behind the wheel, um, but Neville insists on it, oh, you know, oh, you're going to steal my car now, um, and so Dan breaks the window with a rock and ends up uh, in the driver's seat himself to hopefully, you know, get the keys out and whatever, um, but a cop comes over before that can happen, and bus stand for a DUI, which he could have pinned on Neville for sure. But, uh, you know, in the example of family helps family, uh, you know, he, he was not going to do that. And in fact, at the end of the episode, when they sort of, um, you know, make amends, Jackie brings Dan home from, from jail. Um, it, it's like a, uh, you know, another sort of heartwarming, hey, this is what family does moment, um, because he explains to Neville, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a part-time, you know, hardware store guy. I end up in jail. No one cares. 
you know, a, a veterinarian with a, you know, a, a well-respected practice ends up in jail for a DUI, that's news in this kind of town. So, um, you know, that, that I think really drove the point home even further uh, that this is, this is what family does. I think, you know, this was a, a really good, uh, well, and I'll get to the other part of the episode, you know, I guess I'm not wrapping the episode yet, but, but I really like this uh, portion of the episode for sure. I, I love that, you know, yeah, look, we may not have much, you know, but we have each other and we support each other. And, you know, and that's something that does go back to those early episodes of Roseanne even way back when, you know, family uh, in this particular case, it does for family. I mean, we've seen a lot of sort of, um, you know, blue collar sitcoms over the years that, you know, sort of had that edict in mind, but not really in practice. Like, you, you know, Katie Seagal, of or, or course, who plays Louise, you know, started married with children as well. And that was like, you know, the family always kind of stunk each other, hated each other. But it is true, you know, at the end of the day, they still would, you know, fight for each other too. Um, you know, nobody uh, insults my family but me kind of thing. Um, so, and Mama's family is another one that comes to mind, you know, thinking of like the, you know, the, the classic kind of blue collar family sitcoms, but, um, well, of, of my generation, I guess, you know, Green Acres and some of the other ones would be a little bit more, uh, you know, in, in the past, but in any event, um, I, I like that they had this sort of, uh, this moment of, or that Neville at least had this moment of clarity of, you know, that was, uh, maybe kind of out of line for me to say. And in that episode a few weeks ago with, with Jackie and Dan, I did feel like Dan actually was was kind of out of line in his insistence on the money and, and you know, making Jackie call Neville and all that. So, you know, it kind of comes full circle here because uh, Dan, you know, clearly took the higher road and uh, and all of that. Although, you know, he brought it up in the first place, which he was not supposed to do. But, uh, but in any event, it, you know, sometimes when the truth comes out in a lot of different things, um, you know, it's, it's almost for the better because then you can sort of heal those wounds and whatever. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that they had that, that fight. Um, and it was nice to see Neville. We haven't really seen much of him this season. Um, you know, in the very beginning of the season was the honeymoon episode. Um, but other than that, we haven't seen him too much this season. So it was kind of nice to get, uh, and that's, uh, Nat Faxon playing him. It was nice to get a, a Neville episode. Um, but this was also a Mark episode. The only person from the opening credits we did not see in this episode was Mary. Uh, you know, no surprise there. But Beverly Rose also was not in this one. Um, you know, she's been certainly a recurring character lately. Um, but uh, the Mark plot is the dating portion of the uh, title. So Darlene has started her new job uh, in order to get Mark into a good school. We learned this uh, last week in... Uh, the new episode that she is going to uh, quit her high profile new job that she just got to become uh, a lunch lady at the school that Mark is now going to go to next year. Um, and so she's already started this job and uh, this is the first episode with it, but she meets uh, this, this kid who is, uh, you know, smart for his age. So he's in college at 17 already. And um, he it turns out he's gay and he's, very attractive and so Darlene's like oh you know I have a, a, a gay son who's also a bit lonely and um you know you know this guy's going here already so if they hit it off you know he already knows uh, someone at the school and um I, she sort of played it off to him like well you know you're you're uh, I want you to have a friend kind of thing um but I, I think we all know the ulterior motive there um and, and she basically you know kind of tipped her hat at that, uh, tipped her hand at that as well. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, the, the two meet at the lunchbox. He was trying to avoid his family embarrassing him, Mark was, but uh, they, of course, figured it out. So the, the family sort of gets gets their, uh, you know, embarrassing jabs in, but uh, it all it all did not matter um, because it was not a match. Mark actually uh, was smothered uh, by this dude with, you know, all of this talk of, oh, we're going to be roommates next year and this, that, and the other thing. And Mark was like, you know, this is, this is way too much for me. Um, and in fact, uh, the guy asked Darlene, uh, you know, the next day at work, Hey, you know, did Mark say anything about me? Da, 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 da. Has he texted you yet? Um, you know, I just left him 15 minutes ago. 
<laughs> and so Darlene's like, oh, yikes, you know, what, what have I done here? What have I put uh, Mark through? So in any event, uh, he ends up, you know, saying, look, I, I can't do this. Um, he tries to get Darlene to, uh, to type the, the text, but she is a little too lovey-dovey with it. Um, so it did not go over as planned. Now, you know, this could be potentially some sort of recurring character. It could be a one-off as well, but, um, you know, if they are going to be going to the same school next year, if Darlene is going to be working with him, uh, at the, at the cafeteria, we, we may see more of this character. Um, I, and I, I apologize. I should have written his name down. I forget his name. I think it started with a G. Was it Gabriel or something? A, 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 he was wearing a name tag, so I should remember. But a, in any event, um, we, we may see more of him next season. I don't know. Um, but uh, if, if it's a one-off, I, I think that's fine, too. We don't need to sort of hammer this one home. But um, but yeah, it's it's nice that they had a, a Mark-centric episode, a Mark-dating-centric episode. Um, you know, and, and I sort of always bring this up uh, when there's um, you know, kind of a heavy gay plot, uh, with, with the Mark character that, you know, sitcoms when I was growing up never did anything like that for the most part. There was a few, um, you know, Brothers was a popular one because it, uh, where I was anyway, because it took place in Philly. So that ran, I think it was a Showtime show, but it ended up running in syndication as well, um, which is how I saw it. And Soap, of course, with Billy Crystal. But in terms of like, you know, uh, youth you know, gay stuff. I never, I never saw anybody like myself uh, on. Well, I did, I guess. I was like Darlene, <laughs> but in terms of uh, the the sexuality, so it's 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 refreshing to see that um, you know in this kind of you know new era um, of of you know people allowed to uh, you know be more themselves or whatever, and it never seems uh, forced on this show. It, it's something that I really appreciate. I thought for a little bit, you know, when Roseanne season 10 started and Mark wasn't, hadn't officially come out as gay. He just was sort of, um, dressing in, in more feminine clothing and stuff. Um, I think it was until the Connors that they officially was like, oh yeah, he's gay. Um, I would have to go back and, and look at that. But, um, but in any event, um, you know, to to see that you know in, in such an authentic way, you know, I, I did think a little bit, oh, they're they're really trying to check some boxes um, when the Roseanne reboot happened. But as it has gone on, that it's been clear that that's not the case. Um, and and uh, you know, one thing that's nice is I don't even know what Ames McNamara's sexuality is. You know, it, is he gay in real life? I really don't know. Um, and I it doesn't matter like that, you know, and that, and that's the, the thing that, uh, this is a little bit of a tangent now, but, um, you know, when people are all up in our, you know, only gay people can play gay people, you know, well, okay. Eric McCormack is, is not gay in real life. And he played a tremendous, you know, one of the most iconic gay characters of all time on a sitcom in Will and Grace. So, you know, shut up with it really. But, uh, so I, I don't know what Ames, uh, sexuality is. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, because he, he plays a, a great character here. Um, and, and it was nice to get a, a Mark centric episode. Um, and it was very funny. It was a funny episode. Um, a lot of laughs throughout, but in, in both, uh, plot lines really. Um, and it was, it was nice to see, uh, like I said, Neville was back. Um, boy, in terms of an MVP for this episode, uh, I'm not really sure. We had a lot of uh, good ones, you know. Uh, obviously, John Goodman, you know, uh, had a lot of stuff going on with, with the Dan character. Um, and sometimes I do put it in terms of like, okay, which which character, uh, you know, do I think had the, had the best moments or whatever. Um, but it really should probably, I guess, be which actor kind of, kind of shown the most, right? Um, and look, this could be another great Sarah Gilbert episode, but I have given it to her the last couple of weeks. So, um, I, I think we will mix it up. Um, I don't, I, yeah, I, I, I guess to be honest, probably John Goodman deserves it again. Um, you know, I, I know he's a perennial here for MVP, but, um, I, I, I just, I love the way that, that Dan handled that. And of course, John Goodman played it perfectly. Um, and he always plays, you know, sort of half drunk very well too. Um, so yeah, that was, that was good. Um, but this is, this has been, you know, there's only one more episode left. It's going to be next week. Uh, it's called the grad finale. So obviously Mark is graduating and, uh, you know, we're going to dive into that. 
Um, but I, uh, I think this has been a really good season. We'll have sort of a whole season wrap uh, next week, too, with the new episode. But uh, I, I've really been enjoying this season. This was another really solid episode. A lot of laughs um, and, and a lot of good stuff with the family. I'm going to leave Dating, Drinking, and Grifter Logic with an A-. minus. All right. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you back here next week uh, for another Connor's review. Check out the other stuff on my channel, though, too. I've got uh, some, some great TV and movie reviews uh, other than the Connor's kind of stuff. Um, so check those out as well. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye.